God gets in the game with us of life. And we're so glad that we are able to do life with you here on Hope Today. I'm here with Tom Hollis and Matt Cogley, and we're going to have an incredible conversation with someone. So Tom, tell us who's coming up in a moment. Yeah, you know, you would think uh, you see someone playing professional baseball, Major League Baseball, and you think, well, they've got everything together. They've got their, they've got their dream. Well, Jason Grimsley is going to be with us. He's written a book called Cross Stitched, One Man's Journey from Ruin to Restoration. And you're going to find out that Jason, even though it seemed like he had everything, including Jesus, there was a lot of ruins to come in his life. And uh, guys, I just love his story. And I love how he, he's, he says in the book, he's like 100 miles an hour all the time. And that's, that, 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 that comes across in the book. That's his personality. He's going for, for it 100 miles an hour. And sometimes uh, 100 miles an hour, you end up wrecking into things. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, and that's that's part of his stories. It's really good. It's going to minister to everybody today. Yeah, it's incredible. You know, thinking about 100 miles an hour, you may or may not have heard, but there's that revival going around on a lot of these college campuses, and God is moving at 100 miles an hour, which is really incredible. And especially this one recently went in Cedarville. Um, I love in the, in the article talked about, I think it was the president of the college. He said, we don't know what we're going to do tonight, but it's up to God. You know how many times we just kind of have to live our lives yeah. that way. Sid is just like, I don't know what to do today, but it's up to God. And look what happens. A revival breaks loose that is spreading at 100 miles an hour. And I think like even what's going on, I just see like across the world mm -hmm. is that we are definitely in a move of God. I think we've like, I think God is doing a new thing. And so we have to be open. We have to be receptive. And it's about saying, you know, what, God, I'm going to lay down my agenda. I'm going to lay down my plans and I'm going to watch you move. I mean, I've been hearing so many like, you know, prophetic words about just like what God is doing, that 2023 was going to be different. And I think the one thing that we have to realize is when it gets increasingly dark, we mm. know that this is the time that the light has to shine, that something yes. has to move forth, that something has to break. And so we're just seeing God move in amazing, powerful ways. I mean, I always say like on TikTok, I'm telling you, like I've been watching things of just people getting delivered, people getting oh, set yeah. free. I mean, it's it's a whole different paradigm. So I think we have to be open. We just know that God wants to move. And I just declare and decree right now, the one thing I've even been hearing is that in the families, God is about to move in our families. He's moving in our communities. And so let us be like, come Holy Spirit. I even heard, um, I think I believe James Gall said, it's like try and do this. Open the door to your house and say, come in Jesus. Yes. Just as a prophetic act to allow Holy Spirit to come in and to do a new thing in your world. You know, I was. it's interesting on the, the Cedarville, revival um, the, the president and you can go to the Cedarville uh, website and and find out about it find the, uh, the article that, that I read and uh, he said uh, a few things that were interesting he said I'm not charismatic in any way <laughs> but I felt the tangible presence of God wow. in this meeting and, and you know that's just not the kind of stuff that I think he would normally say he even the way he wrote it yeah. but he talks about so much about what what revival does in people's lives mm -hmm. and how it changes. It's about the church, really. It's about the church yeah. getting close to Jesus. Yes. That's like the main thing. And then out of that comes this uh, incredible, like, outpouring of salvation, yeah. too. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I think it's just evident. But like you said, said, I think the key is we just open up the door, right? Yeah. Our willingness and our obedience opens up God to revive things in our lives. And I think today we're seeing that take place. And especially in this year, I think we're going to see doors open like crazy. Yeah. The floodgates of heaven pouring on yeah. our lives, on our families, on our businesses, our careers, whenever we're willing and obedient to Christ. Yeah. Definitely. I think it's like one thing we just want to encourage you as well is that maybe today that you need revive. Maybe you're going through a really dry season. Maybe you're going through a really rough time. And 2023 has been hard. I know for so many people, they have lost loved ones. It feels like there's been an onslaught. But we just want to let you know that we are here for you 24-7. So you can give us a call at our prayer line at 888-665-4483. Tom? Absolutely. Well, you know, former baseball player Jason Grimsley had a very successful 15-year career pitching in the majors that included two World Series championships with the New York Yankees in 99 and 2000. His career was highlighted by many ups, but also came with many hardships. And in Jason's new book, Cross Stitch, One Man's Journey from Ruin to Restoration, he opens up about his struggles and proves that God can take a broken person, I love this, and put them back together. Jason, welcome to Hope Today. Yeah, thank you for having me. So tell us, uh, we, we, we kind of gave everybody a little taste there about uh, who Jason Grimsley is. We said you're 100 miles an hour. You say that in the book, kind of uh, 100 miles an hour when you do things. Tell me about, tell, just acquaint uh, us with who you are, who you grew up 
to be? Uh, well, before we get going, something Sydney said earlier uh, sort of struck a struck a chord with me. She said, "Across the world," and I think if you just break those words down, a cross in the world, you know that's what's going on right now. Mm-hmm. You know, you can see it everywhere. Um, you know, evil is getting stamped out left and right. You know, and I just think it's an amazing thing what you guys are doing. You know, I appreciate the the love that you're you're passing forward and passing on and uh you know god bless all of you for for what you do and how you dedicate your lives to it you know i think a lot of us can learn a lot from that but it comes from just relationships and i i believe what you guys are doing are forging those relationships not only with uh other people but with 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 the lord and you know that's that's why i wrote the book that's what i'm doing i'm just a redneck from east texas i could throw a baseball hard didn't know where it's going half the time but i can still throw it and um uh, thought that was my purpose for a long time you know i grew up in a real small town in uh, just outside of cleveland texas and um you would have told me i was going to play in the big leagues i'd have laughed at you but another thing i think i'd have laughed at you is if you'd have told me that i was, I was writing a book that was jesus christ centered and i was on this show and and being able to to tell my story and my story actually of having the ability through Jesus to be able to help somebody that would have been even more laughable earlier in my life, I, think, I believe, but it just shows you the, the, the greatness, the glory, the love that God has for each and every one of us. And that's, that's what I'm trying to pass on. Well, you know, um, I, I enjoyed your book so much and I, I read a lot of Christian books for this show and, uh, This one is is about as real and raw as any that I've read, including lots of very flowery language in here and uh, (laughs) very straightforward. Uh, You didn't, again, 100 miles an hour, you didn't hold back much in this book. Yeah, no, uh, you know, my wife and I, after after we put it down, I I talked to a few mentors of mine, uh, George McGovern, he's the chaplain with the Yankees and other teams in New York, Bo Mitchell, He's a he's a pastor in uh, out in Colorado. Another mentor, both of them great friends of mine, and uh, you know they they advise that we we take the colorful language, so to speak, out of it. And I, I agreed with them, and um, I, I went back and, and reread some things, and I went, I, you know what, that as bad as it sounds, that just re- doesn't really sound authentic or like me. So I'm, you know, we we took some of the really colorful language out. And we were able to sort of keep it, I guess, um, sort of reader friendly <laughs> to, to an extent. But um, I, I just, I, I really, well, after we thought about it, prayed about it, I wanted to be as, as real and as authentic I could in that book and show where I was and how I was living at the time. And um, you know, I think a, a bit of the language shows where I was broken and where I was where I was at that particular time. Not not to say that I, those words don't slip out of my mouth every once in a while now. I think I dropped an F-bomb speaking in church one time and that didn't go over too well. <laughs> well, don't do it now, please, okay? I don't want to get in trouble with the FCC. Uh, yeah, y'all, don't, y'all, don't, y'all don't have that button? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Larry, Larry, have your finger on the button up there, Larry. But uh, so, but let me let me ask you. Uh, so, where was Jesus in your life here? I mean, I know you gave your life at one point to Jesus. Talk about your relationship with God and what that was like in baseball, and then how it kind of changed leaving baseball. Well, I was uh, baptized in 1999. George McGovern, um, Andy Pettit, Scott Brocious. Chad Curtis, Bernie Williams, Mariano were, were huge in my uh, in, in leading me to Christ and in my walk. And um, I was on fire in 1999. I, I thought there was something that I had to do. I had to read the Bible every day. I had to do my devotionals. I had to go to go to Bible study. I was I was on the path of performance instead of the path of of realizing there was nothing I can do with my salvation. There's nothing I could do to improve my standing with my savior. And, um, it, it was, it was basically a performance and, you know, the worst thing that could have 
one of the best things that happened to me, one of the worst things at the same time was winning the World Series in 99. And uh, ego got in the way. And I looked at, I looked back and I I thought, okay, look, look what look what I did. It was it was more that, you know, you got you got the notoriety, you got the parades, you got the the moniker of being a, a World Series champion. And um, you know, that that old prideful self selfish ego wormed its way back back in and as close as I was to God, I I fell precipitously over the next few years further and further away. And then uh, baseball ended the way it did. I mean, just walking away with the Mitchell Report and um, the FBI raiding the house and me just walking away from baseball. Um, left a big hole right in the middle of it. And I was so far removed from God and his love that I was basically ashamed of who I was and what I'd done. And didn't I felt like there, I was beyond redemption, not only with with uh, the Lord, but with my family. And that, that came to a head in 2015. I was living multiple lives at the time. You know, when I was home, I was a dad and a husband. And when I was at home, I was as far removed from a Christian as you could possibly be. You know, I was... I was trying to numb everything with drugs and alcohol and came to the point where I didn't want to exist. I thought everybody would be better off without me. Took a bunch of cocaine and a bunch of alcohol. Three days, that didn't work. So I said, I'm going to do it right. Went out of the woods, put a pistol to, to my face, pulled the trigger and the gun didn't go off. And I was, I was, I was so mad and I, I guess I didn't have the guts to do it again. And I just, I was at a point where, sorry, you won't let me live, God. You won't let me die. What do you want me to do? And that began a slow walk back instead of a fast burn where I thought there was something I could do for the Lord. And him saying, oh, there's nothing you can do. It's my love. You have it. I'm giving it to you. I'm not going to take it away. Now, let me let me show you how to walk this walk. And then uh, grace really came in through my wife. Uh, like I said, I'd figured my kids would be better off without me. My, my wife wouldn't. I still had that in my mind. And um, I was getting ready to move out of the house. My wife came to me and said, Jason, this doesn't work without you. I love you. I've forgiven you. God loves you. He's forgiven you. Now you got to forgive yourself and love yourself. And the grace that she showed me opened me the door to, to the Lord's grace and to his grace. And I actually felt it in that moment. And, um, you know, the, the miracle, that miracle, the miracle of all the bullets I dodged literally and figuratively er, earlier in my life, it all came to a point and said, okay, this, this is, this is why you experienced what you experienced. So you could speak to it. You could reach people. And, you know, that's where that, the idea for the book came about. And here we are. You know, Jason, it's kind of amazing to hear you share your testimony there and how God was able to keep you even through it so that you can share that and you can learn from it, right? So that other people can benefit through the things that they might face. And, and I'm just thinking about your time in the major leagues. You know, one thing I'm learning is just, and I've learned that the environments and the people you surround yourself by can mold you and shape your future if you're not careful. And maybe, you know, just with your experience and what you've learned, you could speak to that a little bit. You know, what was your time like there? And, and because we can't, some people can't um, help the environments that they're in, right? But they can choose how they deal with it and who they surround themselves by. So maybe in your own personal experience, what you've gone through, you could speak to what you've learned and what you could have done differently to help somebody else out. Oh, oh yeah, definitely. When I, when I got to baseball in uh, 1985, uh, if you were a Christian, you were considered weak. You weren't a competitor. Um, you weren't a man. And, you know, that was that was sort of the theme throughout a lot of my career. And uh, another reason I think God led me in this direction was to be able to define what, what, a, what a Christian man, whoever you are, wherever you are, looks like and that's just that's that's that you love the lord you know he created every one of us unique we're all different 
we're all individual works of art and no two are alike. That goes with personality, looks. I don't I don't care what trait you throw in there. Every one of us is totally different. And we don't think the same way. We don't act the same way. We don't have the same interests. And we're all still loved by, by our creator. And, you know, he, he, he made me this way for a reason. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to be okay with that. Whereas when I was a Christian, when I first became a Christian, I thought I had to change who I was, who he created me to be. And I think that conflict helped or added to the fall away because I thought I had to be a totally different person, personality wise, interest wise. And I tried to completely change who God intended me to be. And so that was, that wasn't authentic in any way, shape or form. And I, I think it, it's it's made me realize that it, it's it's okay to be me. I'm, I'm flawed. I know I'm flawed. And some people are going to really like me, and some people might not. Mm. And that and that that's okay. I don't have to please everyone. There's only there's only one I got to please. That's my Lord and Savior, mm-hmm. on a da- on a daily basis, and my wife, obviously. <laughs> but uh, you know, that's I think that was that was one of the biggest things is that I, that I took away from it is it, 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 it's okay to be, you're going to fail miserably on a daily basis. We all are, you know, not one of us is worthy. And, um, I think that's being able to accept that and know that and, and love that fact that, that no matter how, how many times we fail, he loves us regardless, you know, and, for, and, and being a parent, I see that more and I get that more now. You know, no matter it doesn't matter what my kids do or what they did, there's an unconditional love there that will never go away. Mm-hmm. And through that relationship with my kids and my wife, you know, I'm 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 starting to be able to grasp a hold of the love that, that the Lord actually has for me. You know, I, I I love what you said about you know being yourself because I can remember looking up as a young man, looking up to a person in ministry that I knew and. I was like, well, someday I want to be like him. And it never, that day never came. You know, it was like, because I wasn't him. I wasn't meant to be like him. I meant to minister and, and live the way God made me. And, you know, one thing that I really liked about the latter, uh, I think it might have been the final chapter or close to the final chapter of your book, is you, you had, you put the reaction, you let your family write the reactions that they were going through. What was that like here in their side of the story? You were out in the woods there. Nobody knew where you were. And it, it, it's all related to that, that, that day there where you, you tried to take your life. What was it like here in their side of the story? Uh, well, the, first, the first time, I wasn't, I wasn't in, the, in the room when uh, the, the gentleman that helped me write the book, Jason Clark, interviewed him. I had no idea what they said. I wasn't, I, I wasn't part of it. And to read that, you know, I, it it, took, it probably took me forty five minutes to read all of them because I'd, I'd break down, and um, it, you know, it's, it's amazing the insight they had, the, the love that they had, and um, just the the goodness that God has placed in them, and the love that they have. You know, I think there's there's in, in, in my daughter's story, she was on a mission in in Guatemala. And she was actually sharing my story and her relationship with me with a group of people down there. And a, a gentleman came up to her and he had tears in his eyes and said, I want the relationship that you have with your dad. Wow. And she prayed over him and come to find out his dad was having serious drug problems. And he, the guy wanted to know how to love on his dad. And through my daughter and her story, she was able to bring that gentleman to Christ and you know, just the fact that you, you never know how God's going to use anyone, any of us. And, you know, that story is just, it, it's powerful to know that, that my daughter, through that horrible time in her life, was able to use the love that she has for me and the love that she has for the Lord and, and bring that to someone else and bring them to Christ through through a story from a, Redneck from East Texas, <laughs> that 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 got 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 to throw a, a ball for a living. 
and uh, it just shows you the just how, how great our God actually is. You know, Jason, I just love just hearing about your story. Is truly that God has given you and your family beauty from the ashes. And I just, you know, can you just take a moment to speak to that person who's watching, who knows exactly and is in the same place, can identify where you've been wanting to end their life, feeling like they're hitting rock bottom with their addiction and knowing that their family, things are in ruin. Can you just take a moment to speak to that person maybe watching today that feels like they're at the end of their rope? Yeah, I just, I just want to know there's hope. And the biggest lie that you're told is that you're worthless, that you don't have any meaning, that what you've done is unforgivable. And regardless, it's not going to be easy, but the, the easy part is allow God to love on you. And after, after that moment, I don't care what happens afterwards, you're going to be okay. There's, there's not a rehab facility that's going to fix you. There's not a doctor. There's not a pill. There's nothing that's going to cure you of the disease you have. The only, the only way through this is our Lord and Savior. There's nothing he can't do. You're a beautiful creation. You're made in God's image. You have value. And God has a plan for you going forward. Boy, Jason, thank you so much for that. I just want to say to anyone who's identifying with what Jason just said, God loves you. He wants to, to rescue you. He wants to put his life in you. Just You can call that number on the screen. You can pray with one of our prayer partners. Talk to them. Let them encourage you in the word of God. Jason, thank you so much for being with us and being open and sharing your story. I love the, love the book, Cross Stitch, One Man's Journey from Ruin to Restoration. Jason Grimsley, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you, guys. I appreciate you having me on. God bless you, and uh, hope the Pirates have a little better season this year. <laughs> Praise the Lord, brother. <laughs> I know you, you got, you, you, I, I mean, it's miracles happen all the time. You know? <laughs> but Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jason. Uh, well, uh, including that miracle, we'll be praying for you and believing God for you right after this break. Jeffrey was suicidal when he first called our 24-7 prayer line. Paralyzed from a surgical error, he felt hopeless. Our prayer partner, Clayton, was able to minister to Jeffrey for the next three years by listening, praying, and speaking God's word. Jeffrey died a couple days before Christmas, a changed man. He was happy and kind, and he shared the love of Jesus with those around him. He said he never would have known Jesus so deeply if he had never been paralyzed. Praise God for saving Jeffrey's life through our 24-7 prayer line. When you give, your faith and generosity stir up miracles. This month, when you give, we'll send you 30 days to taming the tongue. Let us speak words of love and see lives transformed. To request yours, give online at ctvn.org slash donate or call us at 888-665-4483. Hope happens here. We're so glad that you've been with us during our conversation we just wrapped up with Jason Grinsley talking about redemption and the power of what God can do in the midst of our brokenness. And we know that during that conversation, there was a lot of heavy things that were discussed and that were talked about when it comes to addiction, possibility of suicide. And we're very sensitive and we just really feel the Holy Spirit is just reaching out to you today. Maybe you're watching and you can really identify with that place. We get calls all the time into our prayer line that people who are desperate, people who have hit rock bottom, and people who feel like they are without hope. But we want to encourage you today, if that is you, that you feel like you're without hope, that the voice keeps talking in your ear just to end it all. This is your sign. Stay here with God. He has a plan. He has a purpose for you. And even though it may be so hard and weeping may endure for a night, we know that joy comes in the morning. So friend, hold on. Don't let go of God. He is holding on to you.
Matt, I know we have a scripture that ties into today to talk yeah, about. You know, hearing Jason's testimony and maybe wherever you are, we need this fresh reminder. It reminds me of what it says in 1 John that we love because he first loved us. This means after our mess ups, before our mess ups, our shortcomings, whatever it is that we're struggling with or dealing with, then we're able to love ourselves first and foremost because God first loves us. Can I encourage you watching at home, regardless of whatever it is that you're going through, can you remind yourself, God truly does desperately love you. He'll move everything out the way just for your time, just for your attention. His love casts out all fear. His love casts out all anxiety. His love brings the greatest healing and restoration like we're talking about today in our lives. We're able to love ourselves and others because God always loves us first. I want to remind you of that. Tom, what can you share with those watching at home that man, his love truly does restore us? Well, it does. And, and think about the testimony we just heard from Jason Grimsley. I mean, Jason should have been dead. I don't know how many times I heard him say that he lived more. He's, he's used up his nine lives and he's on his, his next his next round because he could so many things could have happened. But God had a plan and purpose. We say it all the time. God has hope for you today. God's got a plan, a will, a purpose for you today. And so often that can get clouded and that can get distorted and, and things can come against you and things of despair can come against you. And I'm here to say that is not what God wants for you today. God has those plans and purposes. It's not a slogan. It's the word of God. It's true. It was true when it was written 3,000 years ago. It's true now. God has that plan and purpose for you. So trust in him. And you say, I haven't seen it, Tom. Well, Jason didn't see it for a long time either. But he got to the place where God broke through, healed, delivered him from his shame, delivered him from his destruction, and gave him new life. You know, just as you were talking, Tom, I just heard God saying that somebody's watching right now, <clears throat> excuse me, and it says you're, you're feeling like there's a mess in your miracle. How's God going to make this out of a miracle? And I just want to tell you right now that God is saying that there's breakthrough when usually when you're about to come on the other side, when there's a breakdown, the next thing is a breakthrough. So today, stand on that. Begin to declare, and things, <clears throat> declare things over yourself. Remind yourself of the word of God because he is not a man that he should lie, nor son a man that he should repent. If he has said it, will Will he not do it? It is true for you. It is true for all of us. And that's what we want you to cling on to today. That's what we want you to hold on today. So hold on to that, that great hope, that great love. It's only found in Jesus. <laughs>